You know the saying, I'm a lover, not a fighter, or the idea that in times of extreme stress, we can freeze, flee, or fight. I'm a fighter. From early childhood, I have always been willing to step to the line and take a swing where that seemed needed to defend myself or stand up for a principle. And I've been willing to keep on defending that line as long as it seemed necessary. And so, casualties, those were inevitable. Prisoners, possibly. That was hard on my relationships, and it was hard on me too. And in this space at the Church of the Larger Fellowship, where we're moving between our May theme of mistakes into summer and this new exploration of grace, it's worth looking at the places where these two ideas crash into each other right in the messy middle. There are so many places every day where grace comes in, where we let it. It finds us through the cracks. And in those moments where we find ourselves on our knees, ready for any word or movement toward hope. Grace has found me there many times. And lately, I've started to try to meet it in a more active way. I've started trying to do grace rather than just waiting for it. You've heard the saying, holding on to anger is like taking poison and waiting for your enemy to die. I have voluntarily swallowed a lot of poison in my life until I couldn't do it anymore. There was someone eventually that I could not simply cut out of my life, someone I loved, but we hurt each other a lot. There are people in your life who will show you where every one of your growing edges is, and not always positively. And I had a choice in this hard relationship of whether I was going to stay angry. But if my time and even my career were important to me, I didn't have a choice about acting on my anger. I simply could not. I had to extend an olive branch again and again and to reach out to accept the ones that were extended to me. In the process of learning to be flexible in that way, I discovered that the way I act when I'm angry, it changes the way I feel. And that ultimately changes even the way I think. What gets us to grace as a verb is in our thoughts. It's our actions. My seminary, Meadville Lombard Theological School, has designed its curriculum around the idea that we must act our way into new ways of thinking. And when it comes to doing grace, that's exactly how it works. This lived into grace, it is not exactly the same idea as forgiveness. There is still a valid, needed process for examining when and whether we will offer forgiveness. Forgiveness, in some sense, is a wiping away of what has come before, where grace is the cracking open of a door. And that opening, the leaning in action of it, that's different from how we might have been taught to think of grace. That grace is something that can only find us as we sit very still or something that must be offered to us by a savior. The silent and always present vision of grace that has deep meaning for some. For me though, that vision has always left me with more questions than answers. Where does grace come from? How do I know when I have it? Do I have it always? And if so, why do my actions matter? There can also be an exclusionary aspect to that kind of grace, where we imagine it as a halo around the heads of a chosen few. 
I want a grace that moves with me through the world. I want grace that means something when it's hard. And I feel like I've found that, but it is so much more action-oriented than I ever would have expected. Doing grace means I move my body and my words differently, and that's what moves my spirit. That's what sometimes creates a possibility where there wasn't one before. The sacred sources of various branches of Christianity are referred to as a canon. That's C-A-N-O-N. The Catholic canon includes the books of Judith and Maccabees and the letter of Jeremiah. Some branches of Eastern Orthodoxy are even more expansive, while the Protestant church canon is less so. However large or small, canon tends to be closed. That's one way that we as people define what's special by saying what is not. Our Unitarian Universalist faith calls us to something else. We hold that the canon is open, that even our own lives can be read as a sacred text, and that there is possibility of finding deep meaning far beyond the closing pages of the King James Bible. But this approach to scripture means letting go of certainty, being open to what comes. It means being open to being changed. Living grace as a verb is very similar. Our canon can never be closed when it comes to redemption. It's something we can live into moment to moment, and we leave the door open for others to do that as well. May it be so.